Okay, welcome to this week's weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. I've got the risk warning on the screen here. I'm just going to cruise through that. Any questions at all, please just send them through the, the chat window or the, the question and answer box. Typical format here is just to, um, to, uh, to get through some of the, uh, the major, most popular products traded with CMC. But if there's anything else you had an interest in, or just extra questions that you feel I haven't covered, well then, uh, again, questions in the chat box and I'll get to them as best I can. Well, we've got a bit of a data deluge, you might say, this week. Um, a lot of data out today. It was really just the uh, the, the China data. We saw a, a collapse in trade data from China, and that's kind of weighing on indices a little bit today, only only modestly um, down a bit, particularly in the in the UK, where we've got a few um, sectors that are a bit reliant on on China uh, for product growth, particularly the commodity type stocks. Um, but uh, Tomorrow, we've got more chi Chinese data, the foreign direct investment. Importantly, for the uh, for the British pound, which um, for those of you trading it, um, got an absolute crushing last week and has really done for the past few trading sessions. Um, then we've got uh, we've got UK CPI data tomorrow. Um, that's probably going to be one of the first catalysts as to whether this this breakout lower get sustained because you can see that uh, well this is today's candlestick we've not actually closed below the low here I mean it's you know it's looking pretty negative don't get me wrong um, but uh, you know if we put this line in here you can see that we've not actually closed below there and there's this potentially could end up being a bit of a false breakout today's move again moving lower below it and making a new low would suggest it's probably not um, but until we do get a kind of and again I would say arguably this big move down here and closing below here and even just the 147 handle was probably more significant than this spike low but uh, nonetheless it, you know that was the multi-year low and we you know we busted through that but whether we can hold above it I think the first bit of detail will be, uh, will be the UK CPI data tomorrow uh, but later on we have US retail sales data so that will be you know that'll have a big impact on the the US dollar end of things the dollar obviously surged all the last week, even though we um, finished off the week prior with some pretty disappointing um, non-farm payrolls employment data. Um, but that was, uh, you know, they, they would have got a, we've got a brief sell-off in the in the dollar on the day of when uh, a lot of stock markets were closed during Easter, and then the, uh, the dollar just kind of rocketed back to form against most major currencies for the rest of the week. So that you know, sort of strength in the face of adversity suggests we've probably got some more strength to come. But we've got a lot of U.S. data, um, retail sales on Tuesday. Um, importantly, got CPI on Friday, uh, but also quite a few Fed speakers, particularly Stanley Fisher, the vice president of the Fed, on Thursday, and uh, not to mention U.S. industrial production and beige book data on on Wednesday. So. Uh, Definitely quite of a, a busy week on the economic calendar. So for those trading FX, um, a lot of a lot of US based data going on. And then uh so um particularly in terms of the uh, the British pound, late again later on Friday probably got the uh, not only the most important US data for the for the dollar, the CPI, but also um UK unemployment data and average earnings data. Now, the dollar really has been dominating against most of I'm just jumping straight into currencies here because of kind of the nature of the week. I mean, arguably it's a big week for stocks and for currencies, but I'll, I'll cover the currency aspect of it at the moment um, just because of all the economic data out. But uh, we do have U.S. earnings for the first quarter really kind of kicking into full gear this week. Um, uh, so, you know, for some of the, the biggest banks, um, Intel, Johnson Johnson, uh, technology stocks like Netflix, um, they're all reporting. So that's going to have a big impact on U.S. stock markets and, and thus global markets as being the most recognized market out there. Um, but again, if I just jump to uh, what's the, the euro here, you can see that um, similar similar deal. 
the euro has not broken that uh, that sort of 105 handle or just beneath thereof um, that uh, would put it down at new multi-year lows um, as the pound has. So actually seeing a bit of kind of relative strength of the euro against the pound, but um, and I, and I think a lot of that is um, is starting to get attributed to the British election, but I think maybe it's a you know that's I'm not sure how how founded that is. And if you look at this euro pound chart here, you can see that's um, you know, that's pretty much a double top that we're looking at right here. I mean it's a very short-lived trend. But then again, the, the pattern is quite shallow in itself as well. It's a failure to make a new high, and it's making a, a higher high, and it's making a lower low. So call it what you will. I think it's a uh, reversal of this this correction lower. But we'll have to. If we finish today as we are now, you know, it's looking pretty bearish. But, um, uh, you know, we do need to close the day down here and have a close. Because as you can see from uh, from these kind of days, you know, we can kind of push lower but close up above significant levels. So, even though the pound is looking pretty weak against the um, the the dollar, I think it might be coming back into. Uh, they might be showing a bit more strength against the euro again, and, and uh, this the British pound data, as well as some of the European data that we see, which is not so prominent this week, um, except of course the uh, the ECB. On Wednesday, um, so they're not really expected to change anything. There, there's an outside chance that they would, you know, perhaps even like raise the deposit rate back to zero. Um, but really, what it's going to be mostly about is um, discussing the some of the details in terms of how the the quantitative easing program is, has been working to date. So. One of those where we're not there's not one specific decision that can trigger the volatility in the markets to trade. Um, it's one of those where there's going to be a lot of comments made, and you're kind of going to decipher through that, and uh, it does make it a little bit trickier. But you know, depending on you know really how they want to how they want to kind of uh, play it, if you like, um, Mario Draghi particularly uh, in his press conference, then. Um, that will determine kind of market direction. I mean, the euro is already at multi-year lows. I mean, it's debatable how far, how much further they want to push it down without raising instability. But um, as, you know, as some of the economic data from Europe recently suggests last week perhaps being a bit of an exception where it's kind of deteriorated a little bit. But um, on the whole, European data has been improving a bit, and I think that is largely down to the, the weaker euro boosting exports out of the country, so good chance that the ECB still want a lower euro even further from here, but the risk is that it um, you know, starts distorting other markets. So, there's, uh, yeah, there's definitely sort of um, sort of collateral damage possible from this quantitative easing program, and I think that's, um, that's what all these central banks are a bit aware of. Uh, particularly the Fed and the Bank of England, when they're trying to unwind what they've done, um, you know, the unwinding of it of these sort of unusual policies, unconventional policies, um, could create some sort of unconventional results. Now, while we're on the currencies, let's just have a look at the other major pair that's, um, that's traded. There is a bit of a yen data this week, but. I don't believe that's going to be the major contributing factor as to where this this pair goes. Vague possibility within this larger range of a, uh, a head and shoulders here, but I, I think it's kind of pushing through. That could have been the right shoulder there, but it doesn't seem to be happening. It seems to have pushed above it. So perhaps a bit of resistance again from this rising uh, broken trend line, but probably not. And I'd say it looks quite good for a, a push back to the... Um, the peak around 122 and, and possibly beyond if this dollar strength continues. Now, uh, perhaps worth looking at UK markets first. Um, again, always worth looking at the, the long term picture here. 
you know, we've broken this key 6900 we've since broken 7000 so some big levels been broken and the uh, the bias is is clearly up in the uh, the UK 100 and uh, this this strong candlestick over the last couple of weeks firstly the big reversal and then secondly the the strong follow through up to new highs it uh, paints a fairly bullish picture not to say it can't roll over um, and actually the pattern that it's been trading within is a bear, you know, is a bearish pattern. This kind of ri rising wedge, if you do determine it to be that, is um, if it if it breaks below there, you know, we're looking at the the height of that wedge breaking down. That would put us back to around the 6,000 mark again, which wouldn't be completely out of character because that is the kind of trading range that we've been dealing with. Again, if we f refer back to this chart for for quite a while, I mean, sentiment's clearly shifted to a more sort of positive tone, but um, a much bigger correction with people uncertain leading into the general election is is entirely possible and we are running into what potentially could be a source of resistance here and obviously I've had this trend line drawn in since these two tops were connected it bumped into there we fell into this rising trend line but weren't able to close below it big reversal on the day and then you could see that same thing really on the on, on the week where we closed higher oh we didn't close higher for the week but we reversed a lot of the losses and just heading, we just head straight up to the the rising trend line, and today we're seeing a bit of weakness. But obviously it's intraday, and uh, we still could push beyond the the trend line here. Certainly plenty of scope for that. But this, the um, the 7100 is the round number, uh, which we just kind of pushed in towards. What did we actually make a higher here? 6095. You can see it's basically people taking profits right ahead of that round number, and this uh, this rising wedge, a so confluence of resistance here. So. Uh, probably missed the boat to some extent on a little short-term drop, but uh, there is some scope for a, a bigger one. And then this this square here just pertains to my kind of redrawn kind of a, um, area of, of potential demand here. Um, this is where we broke out. You know, there's going to be a, there was a lot of action here to to push us through that that previous peak of the previous week. Um, so then, if we were to drop down to that vicinity again. Um, that could be an area, particularly with the rising trend line, that sees some demand again. That's not to say we can, we'll actually get down there. We could just keep pushing up higher with a, with a much shallower dip. But uh, I guess the idea is that should we move to the bottom of that range uh, and definitely below it, that, that changes the picture very much. Now, um, probably one of the most um, positive charts you'll see out there. Is the uh, the Germany 30? Um, so debatable where you want to put this um, extension. Basically, this is using using this as a as a bull flag type pattern, and then the breakout from this original breakout area, I believe is where I projected it from. Did I? Um, I'll just redo it for those who've not not familiar with it. It's just using this Fibonacci extension. Um, and then just down to perhaps here, you can see we're can either go from from this low or from this. But really, the big one is you get the 61.8 causing a bit of resistance and the 50 in between. But this that 100, so it does, depending on where you put it, does project us up around that sort of 12 800 area. Which would obviously still be a lot of big, some big gains to be had from here when we're at 12,400. So keeping that in mind, any dips are worth looking into. But there really isn't any major support, and it's not even major, just vaguely substantial support. That peak there, obviously the former all-time high, and then the um, the 12,150 down here, which was this peak from um, from the uh, from the uh, the seventh. We do have a bit of uh, German economic data, um, but uh, again, it's put, you know the reason for this rally in the Germany 30 is the quantitative easing program. It's not that the economic data in Europe is that great. There has been an improvement there, boosted a bit by the QE program because of the, the resulting lower euro. 
and uh, to some extent the, the fall in oil prices. Uh, but it's you know it's, a, it's pretty much a QE driven move. So the key, you know, the key data point here will be uh, alongside kind of international concerns. So perhaps the data from China could be some downside risk to these uh, these indices. But the Germany 30 particularly, it's just it's really about the ECB on Wednesday. We jump across to U.S. markets. Slightly different here. Obviously, there's, there's going to be some definite follow-through from the, the ECB. The global uh, liquidity addition is um, important for U.S. markets as well. But it's the, um, it's the beginning of earnings season. The big thing about this earnings season is that there are expectations for an actual loss in, uh, in income generated across the top 500 companies in the U.S. And uh, that's, that'll be the first time in, in six years, actually. Is, um, normally there has been some, it, you know, varies in how, in how much it's uh, grown, but um, there has always been some kind of profit growth, and you know that's pretty fundamentally significant for stock markets. Um, we don't know how significant because normally that's the kind of all important. We live in a kind of world at the moment which are heavily influenced by central banks. And so, with central bank support, maybe market can still can you know can, can weather the storm of uh, lower earnings growth, and um, and still pass on to to new highs and follow this trend higher. But definitely been some choppiness, and you can see this is the daily chart. You can't see it as well, but if you just go to the weekly chart, you can see that we've kind of gone nowhere uh, for the entirety of this year. You know that was the peak in December, down, up again, down again. You know, it's still a bias higher, but um, uh, you know, very minimal new high made here. Faulted. So, could be a bit of volatility ahead, which is obviously good for trading. And if we do get a move down to this rising trend line, I think that could still be in play. Um, I had this circle drawn before; we've not, not got there, so I guess you kind of have to shift it along a bit. And uh, you know, hit this rising trend line within this kind of demand area could be some value to be had if in fact we even get down there. Look at the uh, US 30, pretty similar looking picture. Uh, you know, it seems like the kind of slope connecting these lows and these peaks um, indicates something of significance here. They seem to be about of, of equal value, so I've put in a channel here that's Kind of unconfirmed because it's got two, um, just only two on the, the top and bottom. But potentially this area about 18,120 or so, which corresponds to some extent with the peaks back in December, could be an area of resistance. Um, given the the big rally that we saw on Monday and then the, the following days last week. So uh, let's um, let's jump across to uh, commodities here. Now the big mover today, as as has been recently, is uh, oil markets. Now it does seem like maybe that maybe the situation has changed here. We've got this. I think it's the most obvious thing to uh, of the two Brent and WTI um, in in West Texas uh, crude oil. We can see there was this. You know, this is a bit of a sort of internal trend line, debatable, but it did seem to connect these two highs. Worked to some extent here. We've got the breakout with the gap um, on uh, the 6th of April. Yeah. And so now we're basically, we've, we've, we've pushed higher back up towards these uh, February highs. We've had a drop back down to the sort of breakout area. It's a bit messy around here. We've got some moving averages and sort of too much drawing, perhaps. But so uh, you can see this was uh, our peak here, dropped down not quite to it, and sort of accelerated away from here. So sort of looking good for at least a move back up towards the the bottom of this supply area. And given the fact we've bounced off it one, two, three, you could say four times, maybe the fifth time will be the one to push up towards the top. But this is still quite a big area of, of um, resistance here. Now I would imagine there's going to be some sort of selling going into 54 as there has been uh, 
um, you know, th this happened more around 53, 54 I think is kind of the bigger one. Um, but if we can close above there, then I think perhaps a bit more of a, a bit of a different paradigm in, in oil. Uh, we of course got the the U.S. inventories data this week, and um, we saw again a massive build up in in oil last week, um, ten or so million barrels, I believe. Um, so the the oversupply picture is still there, um, and it looks like maybe a, a deal is going to be uh, be done in Iran. So that is potentially more supply coming in, and uh, data from China is looking pretty weak. So the oversupply under demand picture is still very much there. Um, yeah, I guess the only real support perhaps is um, slightly improved US data and um, you know the Eurozone on the whole seeming to improve a bit and some further potential demand from there. But um, you know, it's a pretty weak case and I think it's perhaps it's just the market's a bit oversold and we'd really just need a, a much bigger catalyst to, to send it much lower. Jump over to gold. Now, um, again, a bit one of the sort of complicated, uh, probably overly um, overly drawn chart at the moment. But um, I think the one to watch at the moment is potentially an inverse head and shoulders pattern here. Um, you can see that this, even if you're ignoring the pattern, this 12.1225 thereabouts has proven a pretty heavy layer of resistance. And uh, if we do get the breakthrough there, I think that's pretty pretty important. And if we were looking at this as an inverse head and shoulders, the, the height of that pattern would put us pretty much right at the uh, the January peak, around 1,300, that round number. So just an objective. It's not to say that objective will work out. It's got the general sort of supply zone to deal with first. And this uh, declining trend line. Uh, but there is some potential there. Yeah, you can see that's that's just kind of how I've drawn this big breakdown here through there. You, you could have it here, so watch out for that kind of area about 1250, which is obviously a round number as well, but you know, more conservatively up here. Um, you know, gold. I I, you know, I think in terms of sort of physical demand in gold doesn't really warrant the kind of move in, in prices that we've been having it. I think the physical demand is is definitely there on the behalf of uh, particularly from central banks um, is where a lot of the demand is coming from and the physical demand is, is is actually down a bit from from China but probably not massively justifying the kind of moves that we've been seeing. It's really uh, I think gold's really pushing around based on the, the US dollar, so we, is, we, the similar sort of data that we follow for FX I think is relevant for the, the dollar, particularly anything pertaining to the Fed. So uh, for that, uh, the, the beige book, or the Fed's beige book on Wednesday, and uh, the Fed speakers on Thursday I think could be the, the trigger for or not, uh, the um, rather, you know, the cause of a breakout or a failure rather, um, in this, in this re reversal in gold. Uh, worth looking at worth looking at silver. It's a um, similar situation. Um, so we basically failed at this um, 17.50 odd area with this previous peak from February. Failed a couple of times. So you know, I've come up here. Okay, understandable sort of failure once. Moved up, failed, failed to make a new high. Now we've made a new low. So looking fairly bearish. And we've, we've got a we had a bit of an opportunity on the bounce there back to the breakout area. We're already selling off again from it. There is some scope for um, a move off this area, but I think it's to some extent already happened. So you could probably get rid of that. And now it's just this kind of uh, weekly demand area coming down from the the bottom here. Could still offer some sort of support, maybe somewhere in the middle of it, um, based on the the breakout that took place um, above this uh, March 16 uh, March 16 peak. But it's um, you know, this action is it to me it looks like it's rolled over 
and uh, probably heading down, down to the lows again. In this instance, given these um, the kind of strong support back seen back here, and the fact that it was that that we were trying to push below but couldn't, I would probably put more weight on the, the 1550 than I would at the um, 15 sort of 30 that was the absolute low. Could just get a bounce, a, a rebound straight off there. So I think that is uh, that's about it. You know we're um, you know we're looking at the dates, uh, a week full of economic data. Um, China is uh, going to be an important one. Um, I think I didn't even mention the fact that on Wednesday it's um, uh, China's GDP, which um, given the sort of global growth concerns are still the kind of biggest downside risk to um, to particularly stock markets. So if you trade in some of the indices, um, that will be big on, on um, some of the uh, early on. Uh, on Wednesday, and obviously later on on Wednesday we have the the ECB, so that's going to be pretty huge for if you're term, uh, tr trading the the UK 100 and the Germany 30, and uh, a lot of economic data should uh, be pushing these FX markets around. So I think definitely a good amount of opportunity this week, um, and of course if you are trading any U.S. equities, um, it's gonna, it's going to be a big big week for the banks: J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs. Um, they're all reporting earnings and may also have an influence. Um, I would say most likely will have an influence on uh, on the likes of the US 30 and the, the US SPX. Okay, thank you very much for attending. Uh, Jasper Law signing out.